You ever wonder why some guys are out there in the middle of nowhere on the lake, looks like they're fishing nothing, and then every single time you see them at the weigh-in, they have a giant limit of bass? Well, chances are that's no coincidence at all. Those guys are fishing extremely specific spots that they've learned from hours of map study and time on the water. What's up guys, Ben Melican here today for Mystery Tackle Box. And today we're going to talk about different ways you can read paper maps and learn different bodies of water at home and then go to the lake and apply those to find more bass and bigger bass this season. Through and through in your heart. Finding and catching offshore bass, and really bass anywhere on a body of water, is all about a three-prong approach that I use every single time that I hit the lake. Step number one when it comes to finding bass offshore has nothing to do with the lake at all. It's actually map study at your home. And what I mean by map study at home, I'm talking about going online and I use two different resources. The first resource I like to use, I'll go on the Game and Parks website, the DNR website, whatever it may be, and go find the best contour map before I get to the lake. Now, when you're looking at these contour maps at home, it's super important to remember the basics. You know, lines that are closer together on a contour map is a steeper drop off and lines that are more flattened and spread out are just like the lake bottom, a flatter area of the bottom of the lake. Now, high percentage areas, and we'll talk about high percentage areas to me, uh, simple things. I focus on the most simple characteristics of a lake I can find. If there's one major giant point that I can see on that map, I'm gonna take a look at that, I'm gonna circle it, that's a place I'm definitely gonna come back to. You know, another thing I like to look at, road beds. Road beds are a super easy thing to see before you get to a lake. Oftentimes in that contour map you can see them, but that leads me to step number two in my two-prong approach before you get to the lake, and that is going on Google Earth. Google Earth is a great, great resource. I know a lot of people use uh, different other types of resources as well when it comes to satellite mapping, but if you can take a look at that lake and see where that road used to go across that lake or where it was before the lake was flooded, that's an awesome, awesome area. You know, in other bodies of water that are extremely clear, Google Earth can be an awesome resource for finding different types of rock shoals or big clusters of boulders or offshore rock piles and structures like that. You can actually see them a lot of times from the satellite imagery, and those are absolutely places I wanna to come to the lake and check out for myself. So step number two in my three-prong approach in finding those bass and fishing for them offshore is heading out to the local body of water, hopping behind the screen of my sonar unit, and really getting out and scanning and getting to know the lake. So I've got these areas that I've already circled, you know, these main lake points, road beds, uh, rock clusters, stuff like that. Now it's time to actually go see what they look like. And to get a little bit more advanced on this, side imaging is an absolute necessary tool uh, for doing this and scanning big, big stretches of area on these giant bodies of water. I'm gonna hop behind the boat, show you guys how I use structure scan uh, to help find more and bigger bass. All right, so this might be really tough for you guys to see in here, because of course the sun had to shine today. But here we go, this is our side imaging screen right here. So you can see it says 80 right there on the bottom, so we're shooting out 80 feet. I like to start with 80 when I know there's some structure nearby. And I'm just gonna get out and scan. I'm gonna spend some time back behind the engine, take a look at what's there. You can uh, kind of see some fish are back over there. Kind of hard to see at this point, like I said. We're gonna do our best though. So scanning out around here and you can start to see there is a long brush pile right out here. So what I like to do is I don't put a waypoint right on top of the brush pile. What I'll do is I'll put a waypoint where it starts so we'll drop it out there, push that we want a tree there because it is a tree, and then we'll go over to where it ends. And we'll drop a waypoint where it starts and where it ends. So what that allows me to do is, I'm not just gonna be guessing where that is. I'm gonna have specific idea, a line of, of where it starts, where it ends, and then if I come up to a rock pile, I'll actually, uh, I'll drop one on all four corners of a rock pile. Uh, if it's round, you know, I'll drop four, four corners there. That way it gives you a lot better idea of where that piece of cover is uh, as opposed to where the boat is. You know, you're not just casting at a, a specific area because maybe your boat will drift up onto the edge of it and maybe the edge of it was the sweet spot and you'll wreck that spot. This allows me to stay back off that piece of cover uh, and really work through there and see if there's any fish. 
So as you can see, structure scan cuts the learning curve tremendously. And since it's been around about the last decade, it's helped thousands of anglers find fish so much easier. When you can shoot the map out 100, 200 feet to the side to find a little isolated piece of brush pile or boulder or whatever you want to fish, that cuts the learning curve tremendously for anglers. All right, so we got those rock piles, brush piles, everything we want marked offshore. We punched them into our GPS coordinates. Now it's time for step number three in my three prong approach. We're going to fish them. You know, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Of course, we're going to go fish them. We found these great spots. We put the time in, the, the work, the money to go out there and find them. But there's some specific keys that are going to help you catch more fish and really cut the learning curve on what you're feeling for down there. The most important thing to me is you're going to be using bottom dragging baits. Um, so big jigs, big Texas rig, deep diving crankbaits, Carolina rigs, just about anything that's really, really heavy that's going to stay on the bottom is going to help you feel out what's down there so much more uh, than just something that's really light and finesse. You know, after we work through an area with those big lures, we might come back to a drop shot or a shaky head or something like that. But big baits will cut that learning curve. So what I'm talking about when I'm talking big, I'm talking about 25 foot diving crankbaits on a 10 foot rock pile, or I'm talking about a three quarter, one ounce Texas rig or jig, tungsten Texas rig that is. And yeah, it sucks. You're gonna lose five, $6 weights a lot. But in that process, keeping that bait down there is going to help you feel out the bottom contours down there. And it's really gonna help you break down a fishery so much quicker than if you're only using a 3 8 or a half ounce bait. So that's my three step approach whenever I go fish offshore at a new body of water. And you can apply these to bodies of water you fished your entire life. You might go out, find a bunch of spots you never even knew were there. And I can almost guarantee you when those fish make that big movement out deep, you're gonna be one step ahead of them. You're gonna be waiting for them when they come out there and catch some of the biggest slaunches of the season. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will catch you on the next one. I am out of here.